very touching sentiment. As the Americans like to call it, togetherness. Oh, yes, this husband and wife are very close. Very close indeed. Unfortunately, his knife is about to sever the bonds of matrimony. <laughs> uh, for this crime, Francois Toulouse uh, was sent to the guillotine on August 29th, 1933. As your poet Shakespeare says, that was the unkindest cut of all. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will step this way, please. Ronnie, moved. Oh, no nonsense. It's only a waxworks figure. Uh, you're quite right, my friend. Only wax. Those people of mine cannot harm you. But they look so real. Thank you, Mandy. Well, then you're the artist that modeled them, sir. Yes, everyone. This way, please. Walter, the mass murderer. You see him now as he was apprehended by the French police. But not until his weapon had claimed six victims. He was executed by the state in 1937. I executed him myself in wax. Same year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor fellow. I see he's being executed still a third time. I hope you don't mind. I'm very flattered. Excellent likeness. Don't forget the foot, my dear. The foot? Yes, well, back at the club foot. But in spite of his handicap, he was a very active man as his six victims discovered. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our tour. Remember, Jacqueline's waxworks are open daily from 9 to 5 for education and entertainment. Right this way, please. It's closing time. famous quote from an even more famous gentleman. But his good father had no trouble obtaining the confession. <laughs> After all, his victim was nothing more than a cherry tree. Well, ours, ours was living flesh and blood. I wonder if an admission of guilt can be extracted from a chap who, as we have heard, has already been executed not once, not twice, but three times. Yes, my friends, Vardak, the mass murderer, certainly should be harmless now, now that he's merely a cleverly moulded figure in the waxworks, which, as it so happens, is the setting and the title of our story. And moving amidst models of monsters and murderers, you will encounter some very real people, our players. And they are Pierre Jacqueline, master sculptor, whose wax companions include no less than 50 of the world's most diabolical murderers, played by Oscar Homolka. His niece, Annette, beautiful, beguiling, a pleasant contrast to her sinister surroundings, played by Antoinette Bauer. Colonel Bertrand, 
a pursuer as relentless as he is mysterious. Portrayed by Martin Kozlek. Detective Hudson, a very young man in a very dangerous business. Played by Ron Ely. His more seasoned colleague, Sergeant Dane who is to learn that flesh-and-blood murderers are much easier to capture than any other kind, enacted by Alan Baxter. And Lieutenant Bailey, whose not-so-enviable responsibility it is to solve the mystery of the waxworks, portrayed by Booth Coleman. So come, let us go into the Chamber of Horrors together. I vouch for the fact that you'll enjoy yourselves, and it'll be interesting to see if you can find your way out alone. Sergeant Dane. Uh-huh. Well, open up, man. We got business. Well, sure. Practically nobody comes here for pleasure. Just a minute. Irene Coulter, 2425 Vantage Avenue. Age 24. Height 5 feet 3 inches. Weight 122, brown hair, fair complexion. Not anymore. Doc seen her yet? No, he's working on another customer down the hall. I wish he'd hurry up. Don't worry, she's got all the time in the world. We haven't. Looks like you got a full house. Got an empty slab in the cooler. Hey, what you doing? Getting a bite to eat. I ain't had my supper yet. Just a sandwich. Guy's got to keep his strength up, you know. I suppose there's no chance of our seeing the murder weapon. Uh, Doc sent me down to the lab for examination. Just a hatchet. Just a hatchet? Haven't you got any feelings about these things? Well, sure I do. I nearly cut my finger on this one. Boy, it's sharp. I'm glad there's something sharp around here. Well, there's no sense staying here. Tell Doc to get in touch with me as soon as his report's ready, will you? Sure. Come on, let's go. Ugh. Hey, you guys born in a field with a gate open? There ain't healthy to let drafts in here. Lieutenant, but he's thorough. At least we have an accurate report on how the girl died. That's well, not much help, Sergeant. No prints on the hatchet. We're not getting any breaks. But we mustn't forget this. Found it in the alley near the girl's body, remember? Sure, the drawing. Well, we know she was an art student. I'm interested in the model. Nobody can identify the man. Guy with a game leg. Maybe he was a model for her art class. She hadn't been to school for nearly a week. Captain Horn's trying to get a lead on her movements during that last afternoon. <laughs> Bailey, homicide. Yes? Yeah, it did, I see. Now let me have the address. Uh-huh. 
got it. Thanks. Yes, right away. Horn just spoke to the girl's landlady. Where do you suppose she said she was going during that last afternoon? Jacqueline's Waxworks. Just two blocks away from the alley where her body was found. You better get down there. And take this with you. Hey, what's the matter? I was just thinking. Wouldn't it be funny if she'd drawn a picture of her own murder? Yes, Sergeant. It would be very funny. You see, I know this man. You do? Certainly. I can show him to you. You are quite right, Sergeant. He is a murderer. A wax dummy? Figure, my friend, for a statue. <laughs> An artist has made dummies. Your work? Model from life. Uh, perhaps I should say from death. When was this? Oh, many years ago in Paris. Uh, as I recall, he was sent to the guillotine in April. Oh, Paris in the spring. How romantic. Yeah. You trying to make a joke out of this? Of course not. Murder is a serious business. You're quite an expert on the subject, aren't you? But it's necessary to my work. Sure. If I can assist you in any way. Well, let's start by asking a few questions, Mr. Jacqueline. Like, where were you last Thursday night after this place closed? I can answer that, monsieur. He was with me all evening, working on a new exhibit. Uh, Sergeant Dane, my niece, Annette Jacqueline. You live here? She's my assistant. I came to tell you there are customers in the lobby waiting for a tour. Oh, thank you, my dear. If you will excuse me, Sergeant. Perhaps Annette can tell you what you want to know. Why don't you take me back? I'll join you later. This way, Sergeant. So, this is where he makes the figures, huh? Yes. The melted wax is poured into moulds. How long has your uncle been in America? Only a month. The exhibit opened here last week. He plans to tour the country. With all this equipment? It's easily packed. He has shown his waxworks all over Europe. You make all these figures yourselves. Must be a lot of work. Indeed, monsieur, but fascinating. A little on the morbid side, if you ask me. My uncle is a great artist. Funny, a beautiful girl like you doing this sort of thing. It is a privilege to dedicate one's life to art. You say you work evenings, too. Don't you ever take any time off? Is this question a part of your police investigation, monsieur? Sorry. No offense. I'm not offended, monsieur. Well, I'd better look around. Is that a back door? No, our living quarters are in the back. You wish to see them? What's in here? Nothing. You're right. Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. Where's this lead to? Nowhere. Nowhere? Door's a door. What's behind it? Please, my uncle. He would be angry if you saw. Do you have a key? Yes, but... Open it. Please. I do not think he wishes you to see this. I'm sorry. Now, oh, what's the big secret? So, this is what he didn't want me to see. You don't understand. No, oh, but I'm going to. Heard him. This guy's dead. No, no, you don't understand. There's a wax figure. Wax? What do you know? Could have sworn he was real. This is what my uncle and I were working on last night. He stored it away until he could build an exhibit to display it. Why the coffin? It's just a box. 
to keep the damp away until the wax has hardened. May I? Who's he supposed to be? Some murderer. What was his name? I don't know. Is it so important? Everything's important. You are a very exact man. Just doing my job, the same as you. Only I don't spend all my evenings working. Neither do I. That's right, Lieutenant. All checked out, all clean. Talk to the niece, too. Annette Jacqueline. She's quite a chick. All right, I'll see you around 9 o'clock. Thought I'd catch a bite to eat before I came in. Okay. Finished? All through. You American men, all you think of is business. You French women, all you think of is... Have you a cigarette? Hold yourself responsible for what happened. Have you talked to the news vendor? Perhaps he saw the license of the car. All he did was report the accident. But you must find the driver. We'll do our best. What is it, Mike? Uh, here are the transcripts of Mrs. Sharkey's statement. Oh, yes, thank you. Now, we'll need your signature on these. Of course. Would you like to read it over first? No, that won't be necessary. Have you a pen? Be my guest. If anything develops, we'll be in touch with you. Mike, would you see about a squad car from dispatch? Miss Jacqueline wants to go home. Well, that won't be necessary. I'm off duty now. I'll be happy to take her home. Please, I don't want to impose. Believe me, it's my pleasure. statement, Lieutenant. <laughs> what else is there for me to say? Well, now, you claim you were working in the museum tonight when Sergeant Dane was killed. And it would help if you could produce some witnesses. I have 50 witnesses, Monsieur. Alas, <laughs> all of them are wax. <laughs> you mind telling me just what you were working on? The finishing touches on a new figure. A model of Alphonse Tragé. Another murderer, I suppose. Ah, but such a beautiful specimen. Full beard and such a head. <laughs> you must really come and see him when he goes on display. I'm more interested in the man who killed Irene Coulter and Sergeant Dane. I understand the sergeant's death was accidental, no? Perhaps both deaths were accidental, in a way. I do not understand. Neither do I. That's why I think you can help me. Anything, monsieur? Anything? All right. 
You can begin by telling me about your niece. Annette. Oh, poor child. Her parents were lost in the war. We have lived together ever since. Fortunately, she takes an interest in my work. But there are times when I think this is no life for a young and attractive girl. You know of anybody else who thinks that way? Of course. She has had many suitors, but she rejects them all. Her only love is art. Suppose one of her suitors was jealous. <laughs> They're all jealous. Wherever we go, men threaten to kill themselves over Annette. Some of them even threaten... Yes? A disappointed suitor. Following us on our travels, waiting outside the waxworks, the other night in the dark, And when this, this uh, girl, this uh, Irene Coulter, came out alone, he thought it was Annette. Oh, I see now what you meant when you said her death was accidental somehow. And tonight? He was waiting again. He saw Annette and the sergeant, and when he drove the car into the alley, it was Annette he meant to kill. Lieutenant. Yeah? Suppose he's still waiting. Where is your car, monsieur? Well, I thought we'd walk. It's only a couple of blocks up there. But you're mistaken. It is more than a mile. Oh, no, not the waxworks. There's a, a little restaurant I'd like to show you. A French restaurant? No, as a matter of fact, it's a chop suey place. Chop suey? Well, sure, I always take my French girlfriends to Chinese restaurants. Do you know many French girls, monsieur? You are the first. And you can drop them, monsieur. My name is Mike, my cousin. I will remember. Don't worry, you'll be safe with me. Everything was fine, didn't you? Well, frankly, I thought the egg foo young tasted like uh, egg foo not so young to me. I ate every bit. Shall we go now? No, no, let's not hurry. You know what they say about Chinese food. Two hours after you've eaten, you're hungry again. So? So we'll just sit here until we get an appetite. But that is impossible. My uncle will be worried. We'll tell him that you were safe in the arm of the law. Is this what you call a figure of speech? Could be a reality. What's wrong? Nothing. I, I, for a moment, had the feeling someone was staring at me. Well, I was. I'm being silly. It's just after what happened tonight. Now, come on. We agreed we would not discuss that, remember? All right. But we must go now. No, no, wait a minute. You haven't tried your fortune cookie yet. Fortune cookie? An old Oriental custom. There's a slip of paper inside with a fortune written on it. How strange. Surely you are not superstitious. My fortune cookies are never wrong. They always give me good advice. What does it say? Do not eat in this restaurant. <laughs> American humor. Chinese cookie. Go on, open it. So? It says, don't stay out too late on the first date. Touché. That's a French expression, you know. All right, mademoiselle, I can take a hint. Shall we? Thank you.
Well, here we are. Safe and sound. I can't help it. I still have the feeling someone is staring at me. Beautiful girls must get used to that. Be serious. I am. I'm saying good night to you on one condition, that I see you again tomorrow. Now you are, how do you say it, handing me a line. No, I mean it, Annette. From now on, nothing can keep us apart. Raise your hands, please. Don't try it. Raise your hands, quickly. Who are you? What do you want? Justice. No need to cry. We've been waiting here all the time. It's all right now. Yes, it's all right now. We've got our murderer. <laughs> Special liaison officer with the French Surete. Your credentials check out, sir. We owe you an apology. It is I who must apologize to you for acting so hastily. But by following the girl, I thought I might be able to locate the murderer. Well, pardon my long nose, but uh, how come the French police are interested in this case? They are not interested. I am acting as a private citizen. The moment I read of that girl's death in the papers, I knew. You what? It's happening again, just as it happened in 1946 and 48 and 53 and 59. The name is different, but the circumstances are the same. Circumstances? You mean there have been cases like this before in Europe? A traveling waxworks comes to town. There is a series of mysterious, violent deaths. Then the waxworks disappears, moves on. And later, in another city, another name, it appears again. I have traced a trail over half the world. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell us that old Jacqueline is some kind of a mass murderer? In all my investigations, I have never uncovered a single shred of evidence pointing to him as a killer. Well, and maybe you have some kooky theory about the girl, is that it? Well, let me tell I you... I do not accuse the girl either. Well, there are just the two of them. There are no others. There are 50 others. You mean those wax figures? 50 of the most fiendish murderers the world has ever seen. Oh, brother, now I have heard everything. Have you, my friend? Have you heard about Pygmalion, the great sculptor who breathed life into the statue of Galatea? Have you heard about the golem, the figure of clay who stalked the streets to kill? You're talking about legends and the long ago. I am talking of reality today. Consider this. In every case, in every city, the victim was killed in the same fashion used by one of the murderers in the waxworks. That girl the other night, slain with a hatchet, just after she drew a picture of Vardak, the hatchet murderer. What about Sergeant Dane? Tonight, he was run down by a car. I am positive he was killed by one of the figures. Well, I'm positive he wasn't. I've looked through that exhibit, and there's no criminal on display there who ever used an automobile as a murder weapon. Yes, uh, I admit it's unusual. Offhand, I have only heard of uh, one such case. A recent uh, conviction in Marseille. The killer ran down his brother and tried to make it look like an accident. What uh, was his name now? Um, uh, 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 Prage. 
Yes, yes, Alphonse Braget. It's late. I think we'd all better... No, please. I can see you don't believe me. But I have at my hotel evidence, transcripts, papers. I didn't say I don't believe you. you then let me show them to you. Tomorrow, Colonel. Right now, I think we could all use some rest. Mike, would you get me Martin, please? Now, suppose we give you a ring first thing tomorrow morning. Will that be satisfactory, Colonel? Martin? As you wish, monsieur. Now, Martin, you'll be stationed at the door of Colonel Bertrou's hotel room until 6 a.m. I'll make arrangements for someone to relieve you. Really, I am to have police protection. My dear sir, that's hardly necessary. Colonel, we can't take any chances. Rest well, sir. Bonsoir, monsieur. at this hour of the night. We are closed. I know. You. The murderer. A mistake, mademoiselle. I identified myself to the officers at headquarters. Colonel André Bertrand at your service. The police sent you? On the contrary. They do not even know that I'm here. Perhaps I can best explain inside. The light is chilly. Very well, monsieur. Why were you following us this evening? A habit I acquired during my years with the Sûreté. Do not be alarmed. I am no longer with them. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? It is possible. At times I am clumsy at uh, concealing myself. Was it in Paris? Possibly. Or uh, Rome or uh, Berlin. Then this is not the first time you have followed us. Seventeen years, mademoiselle. But I was not following you. I was following them. The wax figures? The wax 
murderers. Seventeen years, and yet nothing has changed. We have added new figures. And there have been new victims. Surely, monsieur, you do not imagine. I do not imagine, I know. I know the police will never admit that there is such a thing as sorcery, black magic. But there are ways of bringing waxen figures to life. They are wax models, only wax. Yes, wax models, just like this. Look, Jean Rastel, the blind beggar, executed for the murder of his friend in a tavern brawl. No one mourned him, and he was buried by the state. But while he was at the morgue, a certain Georges Balteau got permission to make a death mask. I do not know a Georges Balteau. Your uncle has used many names over the years. It is no crime to make a death mask. Or to steal hair from the corpse and mold it in with his wax image. In olden days, witches made little wax dolls. The same way, and when the dolls were destroyed, men died. But there are other spells which could bring such dolls to life. They are wax figures, only wax. How could such things come to life and kill? Your uncle knows the answer. Where is he? In the back. He's sleeping. He cannot be disturbed. Take me to him now. I'm armed. Open the door or I'll shoot. No, please.
no use, Lieutenant. I tell you, nobody's home. At two in the morning, they have to be here. You're sure Bertrand came this way after he got past Martin? The man's a fanatic. You heard what he had to say. I wasn't certain he'd come here. I never would have gotten a search warrant. A search warrant? Why didn't you say so? It's been ten years since I played football, but let's see what I remember. Ooh, no cause try. Where's the light switch? Not working. Power shut off. Would be a fuse. No, I think they shut the power off and cut out of here. Hello? Anybody here? See, nobody here but us chickens. <laughs> Some chickens. Living quarters are in the back. Come on. Why so quiet, Mike? This place too spooky for you? Huh. Mike? Mike! Where are you, Mike? Answer me. Send for an ambulance. There's been an accident. In here. Where's the phone? You don't need the phone, Lieutenant. Colonel's revolver. Where is the Colonel? I don't even know the man. Come off it, Jacqueline. He visited you tonight. Did he? What did you do with him? I know he's here someplace. He couldn't have melted into thin air. No. Not into thin air. How did it happen? You'll never know. Perhaps I already know. Before coming here, I went through the colonel's papers in his hotel room. I found the evidence of a score of deaths. <laughs> evidence? <laughs> no jury in the world will believe that wax figures come to life. <laughs> Neither do I. The murderer is flesh and blood. Many deaths, but only one man. A man capable of disguise costume of the blind killer in your waxworks. Is that the outfit you wore tonight? Is that the murder weapon? Put that down! Now, where is she? Your niece, where is she? I have no niece. She's my wife. Where is she? Of 
cause. There's a way of making the image so that it can return after death. That's how I preserved her life, her youth, her beauty, all those years. And when I hold her in my arms, she whispers to me, she tells me how to disguise myself and how to kill her. And no one ever suspects. Why do you kill? From time to time, her life force must be nourished with fresh blood to be molded into new wax for her body. That's why I killed the girl. And what about Dane and Hudson? Well, they were meddling, like Patru. I had to get rid of them. No one must know the secret. Now listen to me, Jacqueline. This is only a wax figure. You do not understand. Look at her. She's sleeping now. But tomorrow, when I whisper the spell, she'll awaken again. Look at her. Look at my lovely one. Isn't she beautiful? What does it matter if fools must die? As long as such beauty is preserved forever. Yes, monsieur. Isn't she worth dying for? <laughs> Oh, my God. 